So we're continuing to look at how brands work or how branding works with chapter three of our text. We're moving on to the brand value chain. And anytime we think about value chains, we think, or chains in general, we think about um, things that are interconnected and kind of one thing leading to the next. So this is going to give us a really kind of um, tangible, very rational and reasonable way to think about how brands are built and the value that they're going to give back to customers and also our company. So there's a couple of things to think about, you know, and, and what I like about this idea of a value chain is because there are a variety of steps that hinge upon one another. It also reminds us that we can't just put out uh, marketing programs. We can't just make these investments and then kind of wait and see what happens. But there are several identifiable steps along the way that are going to contribute to the brand value at the end. Now, the brand residence model, which we also look at in chapter three, really focuses more on the brand and the consumer. So brand residence, the objective there is Resonance is getting to connect with customers or getting your brand to connect with customers, these really deep emotional levels so that it impacts the way they behave in the marketplace. The value chain is going to have a different thing at the end. The value chain is looking for brand value and that both, as I said, can impact customers, but it's also huge for our company and who else? Investors. And these are big things in terms of businesses. So take a look at the brand value chain. We see, you know, as I said, we, we end with the idea of shareholder value. So this is kind of taking the idea of branding and looking at it from a business perspective, rather than looking at it as a more kind of micro um, marketing process or customer process. So now we're exploding it out to think about all the different touch points along the business process. And businesses you know, while I'm a marketer at heart, so I'm always going to think about the customer, a business is really about shareholders. It's increasing and optimizing shareholder value. And brands are going to play a crazy big role in that. So we see here that we start with the marketing program investment, right? So we build programs that, um, whether, you know, all sorts of the aspects of the four P's, products, prices, places, promotions, all of those things that establish who we are as a brand. Um, I think it's chapter five in our text looks at branding through the four P's. And then six and seven, uh, or chapter six and seven, go on to look specifically at marketing communications and how that impacts um, the brand and the branding process and resonance and all those kinds of good things. So we invest in this marketing program and we say, hey, this is who we are. This is who we want you to see us as, to feel us as, and to interact with us as. And all that goes into building a customer mindset. So the marketing program investment leads to a customer mindset. And the customer mindset is, you know, the, the consumer process. Think about from your consumer behavior class or your principles of marketing class. You know, we walk through stages as customers in terms of how we perceive brands. It all has to start with awareness. Right, so we, we know something exists, then we make all these associations, so we start to connect that brand with certain things. Those feelings that we talked about um, in the brand resonance model, you know, fun, excitement, warmth, security, you know, those are all associations that we make with brands. It's really important for us to understand who the brand is or to create a meaning for a brand within our own minds and our own hearts. And because that's going to lead to our attitudes, it's going to give us an opportunity to either attach ourselves to a brand or to detach from a brand. And all of that relates to the activities of customers. And what's the big activity is purchase. And that's what we're really trying to get people to purchase a product and then not just purchase it once, but to become loyal. So that's loyalty is a huge activity when it comes to this consumer mindset. The consumer mindset is then also going to lead to the idea of market performance, right? What's going on in the marketplace in terms of our brand? How is our brand performing? And it thinks about things like price. It's always in relation to competition. So price elasticity, you know, is our price changing consumer behavior or does it not impact consumer behavior? Um, what about our cost structures and our profitability? You know, what are we looking like in the market? Are we making sales and gaining market share or are we stagnant? 
because clearly we want the customer mindset to be positive, lead to actions, and therefore lead to a really great market performance. Because if we have a great market performance, that's going to contribute positively to shareholder value. So our stock price is gonna go up, our price to earnings ratio is going to be in a real healthy place, and our market capitalization is gonna be doing really well. So all of these things in terms of the brand value chain lead us or can lead us to shareholder value if we've optimized our branding process. But it's not even as, as simple as that though, because we have these things that are called multipliers. You know, so, you know, it's not just any marketing program investment, but it's got to be a good one, right? So you have to have a, a, a quality program that you've put out there. If you put out a junky marketing mix, you're going to get a junky customer mindset. So your program has to be distinctive. It has to be relevant in terms of what the customer is expecting, what they want, what's important to them. Um, it needs to be integrated, et cetera. So you got to have the program quality. The customer mindset, you know, as it moves forward, you know, it sees certain marketplace conditions. A mindset is not built by itself. So I can give you a, a program that's quality, but then there's things going on in the marketplace that might intercept that or downplay that quality. Things like the competition, right? Their reactions, channel support. You know, I might have a great marketing program, but if it gets to the retail level and retailers don't care, or retailers don't emphasize it, that's gonna really be a problem. And sometimes too, your problem has to deal with the customer group itself. If you've made uh, a target or really a niche that is too small to give you great market performance, your market performance is not gonna be that great. You know, So if you're focusing on a small segment of the consumer population. And then another issue that's going to impact as you move into shareholder value is the overall investor sentiment. And clearly, you know, there's market dynamics that are going to play into that. Sometimes investors have very positive uh, sentiments because they see that there's growth potential for your brand. Other times they have more negative um, uh, types of sentiment. And that might be because they perceive a lot of risk. Maybe there's comp uh, competition that they're afraid is going to eclipse because your brand is not contributing appropriately to the marketplace. So remember these multipliers because they're really the key in terms of how effective we're going to move through the brand value chain. And to kind of close out, we can see the chain all together. This is the, the figure 3.5 from your textbook that just overlays all the different areas all the different value stages that we went over and all the different multipliers. So the great thing about the brand value chain is that right here, we can manage our branding process because this allows us to see the activities that we need to engage in. It might allow us to see where we need to improve and it gives accountability to the branding process. We're not just kind of throwing things out there and hoping and praying for the best, but we're able to isolate um, different uh, aspects of the process and really manage them to the most effective level.